All right, so today we are in the Berlin and I figured out that uh, as I'm here it would be nice to meet up with someone and do the training session together and actually one of my friends who lives here told me that we could actually meet up and do this kind of thing. His nickname is Chris Stenix, you probably know him and if you do you know that he is very good at things like one arm chin ups, front levers all the pulling calisthenics stuff so I figured out it's a great idea to actually meet with him do the training session and then maybe discuss some of the things related to pulling in calisthenics I have two ideas for a little podcast so if the weather is gonna be good enough we're gonna do that in the Buyu or something I, I don't know what's the name of that park but we're gonna get there and uh, hopefully record something for you. Każdy kilogram się liczy.
mic check, bon, mon bijou, mon bijou. All right, so we are with Chris, also known as Chris Tenix. We just had an amazing session in the Mon Bijou Park in Berlin. So for me, these facilities and in general the park was uh, great. I mean, all the the bars, the the floor, and people surrounding us. Would you say that in Berlin and in Germany the facilities? are supporting the calisthenics community? Well, I would say Germany is not the leader in Europe, but so far I think we have three or four parks, so that's pretty good. We didn't have any four years ago, from what I remember. So I do think, you know, especially since you have each one in a part of Berlin, so it doesn't matter where you live, south, east, west, north, you have one park that's rather close to your place. We are living in the center part of uh, the Berlin, and it was absolutely no problem to find the park. I even had like two to choose when, when we talked before. So yeah, so about our today's session, what, what we did today, like pulling calisthenics, let's call it like that. I tried some arc rows, uh, Chris corrected my form a bit. We did some muscle ups. Before that, we also tried the one arm chin up and one arm pull up. Today what we like to discuss with you is uh, the one-arm chin-up. Why I think this is the good idea to do it today? Well, Chris is... How, uh, how much do you weight right now? Uh, 86, 87 kg. 86, 87. Which is about 192, 3 pounds. So despite this weight, he is able to perform one-arm chin-up. Like, pretty much every day or... Every, let's... Well, I... I like almost every session, every this is session, consistent, yeah. rather consistent yeah. one arm chin up, and he also trains his legs. I do train my legs. Yeah. Uh, those pants are not tight. I this is the main excuse legs. I always have. I even if someone is my weight, I always say, "But I train my legs." And even though my <laughs> my back squat is like 100 kilos, I train my legs, so it's harder. Would you consider yourself a person that is maybe predisposed? What, like, what is your history with the one arm chin up and with? calisthenics in general? Well, in general, I don't think I'm predestined to do calisthenics at all. I grew up doing a lot of swimming um, and any kind of sport that would not really require me to have core tension, to have a hard body, if you will, to remain stable in certain positions. It was more so anything where I was just using the water as resistance. Later, I did windsurfing. All the sports I did didn't really help me at all. It's, it was just seven years ago when I started weight training and even that I think everyone knows. So it. you started with weight training? I did start with weight training but it didn't really provide the basis for any straight arm skills at least I would say. I, right. I really had to start to Hansen from from scratch. All right but did you like uh, incorporated some some of like pull-ups before? Well my training basically was very strength oriented. I was mm -hmm. always the skinny guy who was relatively strong so all right so i would also train the weighted chin up and i worked up to 45 kg for five mm -hmm. reps at a body weight of 78 kg which was already more than 50 percent of my body weight so i think that does give me a certain base of strength all right so in my eyes the perfect exercise is the one that first of all you can measure progress in so from week to week day to day you know that you, you see the numbers well, not necessarily the numbers, but you can definitely tell if you made progress or not. This is the first thing. And the second is just specificity. So the more exercise, uh, the closer the exercise is to the final form, I would say the better it is because it's going to transfer. In one arm chin up especially, I didn't find, I, I don't know at least, any special, any perfect exercise. Every one of them has some flaws. And this is my question, would you rather, considering that, would you go for one specific exercise and train this exercise knowing the progression and everything, or would you rather choose many different exercises and ho like wish that they will uh, kind of work to together? Why I'm even asking? Yeah. Well, like there was a time I was training the archer pull-up and I became like pretty profi proficient in this particular move. 
and then like after a stage of let's say like two months of training it I went from one very like shaky rep and not consistent to three really consistent good in my eyes good form reps and then I took my pulley system that I was working with before and it turned out that my like my one-arm chin-up performance um, according to the pulley system dropped well first of all i think um, when it comes to transferability and measurability calisthenics is always harder to measure to put a number on because as you said first of all where do you put on the number right you would need to walk up with you know some ruler and measure the distance from your arms to whatever angle second of all you um, you compensate with other muscles right say you're tired at the bottom of the chin up you do a swing etc etc so I think that's the first issue with calisthenic exercises and in this case the one arm chin up um, when it comes to transferability I don't think any exercise really gives you the full skill set of another exercise, right? So, right? so even eccentric, like even negative, if you can do negative, it won't give you like... No, that's not what I mean. I mean, if, if you train for one arm chin-up negatives, it's not going to improve your weighted pull-up as much uh, as okay. training weighted pull-ups. So I don't think it transfers as much. Um, when it comes to training for one thing, I do think you have a limited recovery capacity. Yes. So if you split up your week into upper body days, lower body days, I would just stick to the progressions or exercise that lead to this one particular exercise. Okay, so you choose one exercise and you work on it. A rock around it basically, right? Yes, so for example, you're cycling like three months of one, three months a second. All right, so like if we're talking about it, what would you say are the three maybe, three or two, best assistant versions of the one-arm chin-up? The one-arm chin-up? Uh, I personally, uh, because I use it myself and that's how I got the one-arm chin-up, uh, it's the assisted one-arm chin-up. Uh, some people call it the mantle chin-up. It basically is a chin-up where you have, you know, you tend to pull with one arm more and the other one assists you and grabs anything. So the Could be a strap or a ring yes, with anything. I don't really see a difference between grabbing a strap or a ring. It's anything that you grab lower with yes, your assisting longer. hand. And you do a bit of a pull and a bit of a push. All right. Of course, um, at some point you can say, okay, it turns into a half dip yes, with one of your dip. arms. But that's okay. If you say I'm going to do as much dipping as possible, you can still measure it by the um, height of your assisting arm, right? All right? So that's still a number you can put it on. This is the exercise I used. Obviously, you will have to be somewhat subjectively honest to yourself about not using the other arm yeah. too much, but that's up to you. Um, one exercise maybe that doesn't work that I used was um, the archer. Chin up. Archer chin up. The ones that, that we did actually today. Yes, because I think it's more so of a pendulum movement, right? Exactly. So it's not so perfectly like vertically pendulum. down and up, which is what you actually do in a real one arm chin up. Also, you tend to pull to your belly less, which you should train for. That's what for, I did, right? exactly. Like this is my main mistake. Like exactly. I didn't, even when I took my pinky and tried to do the assisted, assisted version with pinky, I, like, I still felt like, I, like I'm doing normal chin up. Maybe I'm more even when I'm doing it on two arms, but when I'm turning the pinky, it's rather like this, like this, and it should be like this. Another thing is I think negatives because they literally simulate the movement so you really have the same path you go up and down Yes, I didn't use them to get to the one arm chin up, but I do think they uh, They might be good for bridging the gap Let's say you're really good at assisted chin ups, but you still don't have the real chin up So you want to add a bit of intensity and you're trying to find like the middle middle part of it That's one exercise. That's two now and the okay. third one is mixed grip chin ups mixed I don't think you really have to lower one ring you can basically decide okay I'm gonna pull to my belly or I'm gonna pull that far that I pull to the other shoulder okay it's all scalable the only difference between those three is you know some are harder to progress on because are some are harder to measure progress at all right I know people who just use the mixed grip up and they were strict about pulling to wherever they were pulling and stopped as soon as their form was uh, getting worse. All right. That's an ego thing, especially if you don't have a mirror or you don't have a camera, like who's gonna look at you and tell you? Exactly. So those are the three exercises I would recommend. So the interesting thing is you didn't mention the weighted pull up and here's my next question, like would you say that a normal person, not like 
excluding freaks and like extremely pulling oriented athletes would you say that it's visible for a person that maybe it's not his main goal but is it possible to achieve the one-arm pull-up or one-arm chin-up only only by doing the weighted pull-up weighted chin-up so one thing i think we have to clear up is that we're training for the one-arm chin-up that means we're getting to the advanced or almost you know like elite level right so while i think if you're a pulling beginner in general training each progression and getting stronger at whatever progression you're doing is gonna overlap to the other one. Say training for the one arm chin up yes. can get you, if you didn't do any weighted pull ups, you can get up to 30 kg or 40 kg. Okay. But beyond that, I think that's when I see little to no carryover from one exercise to, to the other. Um, I have an example of a friend who started doing one arm chin up training. He basically got the one arm chin up and then he got into weighted calisthenics. Um, fast forward, he weighs 80 kg and he pulled a um, weight which was the equivalent of 80 something percent of his weight. All right, which, so that's like most, yes, most right? people say that it that's is enough. the, like this is the moment when you should, the, the transfer should happen. Yeah, and I asked him if he's able to do one arm pull up or chin up and he said no. Although he used to be able to do it, so you could be, like, would you now say training for the weighted pull up destroyed his one arm chin up? You could say that. Right? But at the same time, when he trained for the one arm chin up and then got into weighted pull up training, his weighted pull up was nowhere near 70 kg or whatever percentage he ended up with. He really had to specifically train for it. I myself weighs 86. Mm -hmm. uh, I once did a weighted pull up for fun. I barely got 56 kg. Okay. And you, you're talking exclusively about the one arm chin up, right? Because this is what I would say, at least. Like, for one arm chin up, there's in my eyes no carryover just like you said because the one arm chin up is completely different movement you you twist like even the ring chin up even the ring weighted chin up won't help you that much in my eyes at least it didn't help me because i got to the 50 like weighting 76 75 kilos i got to the 52 kilo also the transfer should be here and i couldn't even like do the half of the movement but here's the thing when i started my weighted pull-up training i completely switched because of my tennis elbow i switched from chin-ups to pull-ups and then i didn't do any work for one arm pull-up after a couple of months i started noticing that i can like do half rep or something okay so maybe in one arm pull-up i i would say at least and this is not this is just my anecdote but i would say that for one arm pull-up the carryover is there for the pull-up, yes. I mean, if you look at the one-arm chin-up, you basically start in a pull-up position, and as you pull in, you start you to turn in. Supinate. So you have a few seconds or a few inches of a new pull-up, a neutral pull-up, and a chin-up. Right. Um, I think what it, what it could transfer to is um, weighted ring pull-ups or ring chin-ups. Because if you do weighted ring chin-ups, you'll also start neutrally and then turn them right, in during the movement. Yes, yes. So I do agree that weighted pull-ups help more for uh, one-arm pull-ups, but not one-arm right. chin-ups. I do agree on that. All right. So there is a very interesting concept that I hear that the grip training and having stronger grip, stronger hands, stronger forearms, carryovers to pretty much everything in training and especially to pull-ups, pulling work. From your experience, like, did you use any grip work, any... I, I didn't use any grip work, but I think I'm the wrong person to ask. Before I did one arm chin-up training, I used to do a lot of rope climbing. Rope climbing? Rope climbing. So I would grab a really thick rope and to a point where slow weighted negatives with just one arm on the rope were no problem to me whatsoever. So, so you could like hang on one arm with rope. Yeah. Okay. So but I might be a person who has developed strength training, uh, grip grip strength with that. If someone can hang for 10 seconds, let's say, on one arm, you can do 10 second hang. Going from this 10 seconds to let's say 60 seconds, would you like? Would you say that person can benefit from that? From going from that 10 second that lets you basically do the movement to 60 seconds when maybe you're very comfortable with that hanging. Okay, well I think this is where you have the same question whether something is uh, beneficial or necessary, right? Well I don't think it's necessary, it's certainly beneficial. Just as if you're training for handstand push-ups, 
sure, if a handstand push-up rep is just 12 seconds and you can send 30, that's okay. But if you can send 60, that means you're so sure and this is not gonna drain you as much. Same with forearm strength. If you can end for one minute and the one arm chin-up training set will take you 20 seconds, that will help, of course. But I do think your grip strength is also getting trained by just do, doing all the progressions we just mentioned leading up to the one arm chin-up. Because that's, your that's arm is still exposed to a greater force output, right? right? So it will get, it, it's not gonna be as effective as just hanging with an arm, but it is going to be you know one arm focused so I don't think there is so grip beneficial but not necessary, necessary. Yeah. what would you say about the bicep bicep training like by bi specific bicep work curls because this maybe touches upon the injury part maybe having like stronger grip is only the performance thing however in my eyes at least the bicep the main reason for me to do it at least is to avoid injury, like to reduce the chance of the injury, of snapping the biceps. Did you do any specific bicep work for the one on China? Because I saw something on your Instagram before and... Well, first of all, nobody's gonna get big arms without arm training, even if you do calisthenics, okay. that, that's the truth. So, well, I do have to admit I did it more for aesthetic purposes. All right. It could have benefited me but I also used to do weighted chin-ups on the bar where the starting position was also already supinated which is where your biceps gets um, steady say 80% uh, um, activity compared to a concentration curl which is the most effective so I might have benefited from that with a one-arm chin-up as we just said just the last portion is actually supinated and yeah. that's where your bicep is on yeah, a lot of strain. Because this is the function this is the one of the functions of bicep so it makes sense absolutely. Exactly. Let's say that I'm doing the one arm chin up and I found myself stuck in the because many people actually have problems with that that's that last lockout part so would you say that uh, maybe doing spider curls where you're basically leaning yeah, yeah, forward yeah, yeah. and the resistance where is you're charting in the, yes. the, the moment like, where you're lacking in the one arm chin. Is that another like the beneficial necessary thing or I really don't know but I would add to that that having a strong biceps in general in general you know being strong in general having muscle will always you know not being weak will have you less prone to injury in general so if it's really a strength issue and I don't think it really applies to the majority of people training for the one arm chin up then yes but I think if someone's too weak for the one arm chin up they shouldn't think really that much about specificity or weak points which we might touch exactly upon later right like, yes but I think um, if you lack the pull strength and let's assume you do have a weak biceps then still your pull strength should give you enough momentum from the bottom to actually finish the move with a slightly weaker bicep it just mm -hmm. means that you're grinding out the rep and you're basically you know not strong enough in general and it's probably even you know 100 of your one rep max which means you shouldn't actually do it because training should also be you know always in sub maximal ranges yes because like we can talk about all these different movements all this like bicep work the grip work but we should consider the recovery and that it is definitely going to take some of our recovery that we could spend on doing more specific work and while I like I don't say that bicep work or grip work are wrong just if you want to do one arm chin up it would be more logical to focus on the one arm chin up and uh, the next question that I have is about the weak points. So I made a video like last time, last, last week or last two weeks about the, what calisthenics can learn from powerlifting. And one of the points, one of the three points was the weak point training. <laughs> and some of you like agreed that it may be a thing for more advanced people, but definitely not for beginners. And would you say that in one arm, like in one arm chin up, is it worth analyzing if I can't do the lockout then I should do more lockout work if I can't start the pull, initiate the pull then I should start working more on scapula and stuff like is it really the weak point or is it just that I don't have enough energy like or 
Well, I think first of all, weak point training should only be, as you just suggested, for people who are very advanced or almost elite. But if you're elite or advanced, we're not talking about, you know, one rep of the one arm chin up, but five, six, seven. But right. what I mean, if you then, you know, you're able to do multiple reps of a very advanced skill, yes. and on the very last rep, you tend to see, okay, that, you know, one portion of the rep mm -hmm. is slowing down very radically, then I think, okay, you might think about it. But, you know, it's something to think about when you're very elite and advanced. Um, so, like I said, I think the general population should really just focus on, on doing stuff that just makes them stronger in general. All right, so let's close this one arm chin up topic. What would be the best way to, for, for a beginner to approach the one arm chin up? To choose two to three exercises, right? Focus on them, then when you get more advanced, maybe, maybe think about things like bicep or hanging, but still you have to remain that your focus on the one arm chin up goal. Something more? I, I would say handle your recovery. You're not going to be able to do um, a very hard variation or a progression of the one arm chin up right away twice a week if you have two upper days or three upper days. I think if you do um, any sort of vertical pulling, uh, twice a week and the first few weeks or months should just have one intense day where you really just you know have one arm focusing on doing most of the work in the rep. Okay. Um, tendonitis and any strain in your one arm is a thing. I had it myself. Um, once I got I the one arm chin up. I to ask like did you have any like maybe not setbacks, injuries that really like put you off, not like slight pains, but... I did have slight pain where I thought, okay, you know, I might have to scale back. I did okay. one arm chin-ups twice per week, um, or progressions thereof. Once I got my very first chin-up, um, I actually did it just once per week. So I, every other session I would do the real one arm chin-up to first see if I can maintain it over the longer period of time. Um, I did have some pain in my elbows. Okay which I can't really say was because of the Warren chin up or not. I did approach it very slowly. It took me some time. Um, it comes down to like managing your fatigue. Let's face it, most people, the slight pain won't stop them from working on their goals. So I would say that if you feel any like slight discomfort, slight pain, try first of all scaling back, scaling back the intensity, see if the problem occurs and then later on, Maybe that's just the managing of the fatigue or some other problems, but you have to be aware of that. Two years ago or one year ago, I got very bad tennis elbow and it basically like changed my training completely. So I stopped training straight arm planche, I stopped training the one arm chin up and I was quite close to it. The one thing that I would blame most is doing one arm chin up every day, every other day, being very close to it and just that desperate feel that you have to do it. Like maybe now, maybe now, doing negatives, doing like uh, every single variation, playing with that more. But calisthenics is a strength training and you can approach it like tricks, like doing the backflip and then trying again, you have to manage your recovery. These are my last words for the one I'm trying I totally agree. I think more than ever in calisthenics where everything is very fancy, people need to just remember the sentence, uh, build your strength, don't test it. So thank you very much for the discussion. It was a pleasure. My pleasure, thank you. A co, w... so I'm with the Chris Tenix, uh, Krzysztof, also known as Chris Tenix. Weź te rzeczy. I'm with the Chris Tenix, jakby to the... był jedyny Chris Tenix tutaj. An amazing session in Montjibou, Montjibou Park. Yes, Montbijou. Montbijou. Had an amazing session in the Montjibou Park, right? Montjibou, Montbijou. Montbijou. Kurwa.
buju or something. I I don't. Yes, too much. Yes, too much. Mom, mom, bijou. We just had an amazing session in the Mom Bijou Park in Berlin. You know, a jack of all knife is a you know a master of all mm -hmm. trades is a. a Jack of all trades is a master of none. That's the beginning, but no. Jack. Rope climbing. Rope climbing. So I would grab a really thick rope, and to a point where slow weighted negatives with just one arm on. And with handstand, and how to overcome these problems? Well, I have even a, a voice problem. problem. We're recording right now. We're recording. Right uh, now. No. 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 Yes. So. Thank you.